And to know more about the topic, I would like to introduce our moderator of this session, Dr. Sandeep Salmi, sir, Distinguished Research Professor, Symbiosis International University and Director of Palmoke Research and Education Foundation, Pune. Sir has done his MBBS in BJ Medical College and he also holds his PhD in Clinical Medicines from U University of Southampton. Sir also serves as the Director of Chess Research Foundation in Pune and is actively involved in research in the field of COPD and asthma. Sir is currently exploring the non-smoking phenotype of COPD in India. Not only this, Sir has more than hundreds of published papers in peer-reviewed international journals. And now I would like to call upon Dr. Sandeep Salvi, Sir, onto the dais to introduce our speakers of the session. Wow, what a wonderful audience. Wish you all a very good morning. Uh, on behalf of Sim Health, it is indeed a real pleasure to welcome you to track three on clinical research, trials and tribulations. I am very privileged to have two very eminent faculty speakers to open the topic for discussion and then we will have uh, a panel discussion with the two faculties. Uh, we will start with Dr. Sanjay Pujari. I'll introduce you to him in a minute and then we will have uh, Dr. Harshika Sachdev uh, who will follow him. The plan is Dr. Pujari will speak for 15 minutes followed by Dr. Harshika for another 15 minutes and then the remaining 15 minutes we will keep for discussion. Any questions that anybody would, would like to ask from the audience, uh, we will address those issues. Uh, the whole objective of organizing this uh, special track was to highlight the fact that clinical research in India is growing and it will continue to grow for a long period of time. It is a necessity to improve healthcare services for our nation. They say the only constant in medicine is change. The treatment that you receive today will be very likely outdated tomorrow. You will have better drugs, safer, safer drugs and more, if more effective drugs. So uh, in order to achieve this, we have to keep on innovating and coming up with newer and newer ideas, the newer understandings of the disease that give rise to newer development of drugs. And once the drugs are developed, it is critical and crucial to test them out in clinical practice through clinical trials. India has probably one of the largest number of pharmaceutical companies in the world. And although they produce a large number of drugs, what is happening over the last few years is innovation has started where new drugs are being developed and being tested out in clinical trials and then given to the patients in uh, clinical care. So all that requires a huge team effort. We need doctors to take part in clinical trials. Hi, Anushka Rai. Students of MBA Hospital Healthcare Management from Symbiosis Institute of Health Sciences on behalf of Faculty of Health Sciences, Symbiosis International University, Welcome each and every one of you to SimHealth 2022, a national conference on transforming healthcare, symbiosis with Ally and healthcare professionals. SimHealth 2022 provides a platform for researchers in the field of allied healthcare to exchange their ideas and forge new collaborative partnerships and interactions amongst themselves. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the pre-conference symposium of SimHealth 2022. The healthcare domain is constantly evolving, opening many avenues for establishing a framework for more equitable, accessible, and sustainable care to all. And with the pandemic exposing the glaring gap in our healthcare infrastructure, 
We require healthcare solutions to improve the exchange and interpretation of health-related information across the system. Let us begin today's session on building intelligent healthcare solutions for tomorrow with Mr. Narendra Shalbram, the Head of Operations at Big MD Pune. Mr. Shalbram has a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Pune University and is a postgraduate in computer management from the same. He has worked as a program manager at Tech Mahindra for 15 years. I now call upon Mr. Narendra Shalbram to come upon the dais and take this session forward. Joint Diplomat Computer Acquisition in Simbash Institute late in uh, 88, 89. And I didn't know that I was going to build my career in the IT industry. So good to see you here and attending this session. Uh, I've been working with uh, FigMD, which is now part of MRO Corporation, for the last five years in the healthcare domain. Uh, FigMD is mainly establishing into data analytics part. Uh, and they are giving services to US healthcare uh, in, in general. Uh, my focus area would be creating a value-based core system uh, for the healthcare and how it is going to benefit all the participants which are involved in the healthcare. So the huge cases in healthcare that will succeed if it is a win-win situation for the patients, providers, that means the doctors, clinicians and the insurance companies all you know how the things work even in India, right? So when a patient gets admitted to the hospital, first thing is asked, do you have insurance? Probably then the hospital system starts how to calculate the bill, eventual final bill. If it is insurance, the rates would be different probably, if non-insurance, might be different. It's nothing different in other part of the world, right? But good, good thing is there is too much of federal uh, interference from the insurance companies probably more laid down processes and so on and so forth. So they take care of how good health is given to the patient, whether it is affordable or not. But mind you, despite of that, there are a lot of churn of patients coming in India to take the uh, healthcare services because despite it is costly, it is cheaper for them if we compare it with the other world again. So what will be patient looking at, what they want? Definitely a cheaper healthcare, right? Uh, the services that they are expected to get, it should be affordable for them and a good treatment, of course. Uh, easier management of case history. I mean, IT is the field which can probably make sure that they have a longitudinal data for a patient in terms of what is the history of the patient, what uh, disease that that patient has gone through and how it can be beneficial for the clinicians who is going to treat for the future problems. Management approach, instead of reactive, uh, it's better to be a preemptive, predictive analysis done by the doctor looking at the patient history and then decide the course of action or the treatment that is expected to be done. That's, that's what mainly patient would be looking at. What will be the doctors or providers who look at for the value-based system? Of course, documentation which should not be a burden for them right uh, be it ehr or the system hospital system that they are looking at it's not the extra work that they should feel whatever they are doing it should be part of their activity and not an add-on task for them that that's what doctor definitely would be looking at it should be minimum interference to the clinical workflow so what the treatment that they are doing be it outpatient clinic visit or uh, within the hospital, it should not interfere with the process that they are doing, right? So, again, it should not be a burden for them for anything that they need to capture in the system. That, that's what they would be looking at. Approval cycles, especially in the US, it's mandatory to have health insurance, right? So, patients are not paying the doctors directly. Uh, every patient must have insurance. So, once the treatment is completed, it's important for them uh, the doctors to submit a claim to an insurance company. So the approval process in general, it is a tedious job. There are a lot of Indian uh, outsourced companies who are actually validating the claims uh, from these doctors and then provide the approvals to the insurance companies to make the final payment. So that approval cycle is too much of cumbersome and then it takes time. So that's what even doctors would be looking at. 
and easy access to the longitudinal data, what I said earlier. So if a doctor has complete history of the patient, it would be very, very beneficial for the doctor to decide what is the course of action or the treatment that the doctor is expected to give to the patient. So that, that's very, very crucial for the doctor to have a complete background of the patient. And of course, if all this is in place, there will be a more footprint in the clinic or in the hospital and the doctors can probably treat more and more patients on a day-to-day basis. That's what doctors would be looking at. What about payers or the insurance companies, right? Best possible care for their members so that they can also attract more and more members to affiliate uh, to the insurance companies and they can take the healthcare, right? Insurance. So that, that's what the insurance companies would be looking at for sure and effective utilization of the network. So it, it's very important they spread their network and then there are hospitals affiliated with the insurance companies who can give the treatment in a timely fashion and in the affordable price. So that network, uh, effective utilization of that network and cost care of course. Uh, as I said, in the US it is mandatory for the uh, patients to take the insurance insurance companies are paying to the doctors eventually so they will definitely look at how the doctors are treating the patients and are they doing what is necessary for the treatment and not beyond that necessity right so uh, i mean we can see in context that if a patient gets admitted to the hospital first thing is make sure how many probably tests that can be carried out I, I happened to uh, take my mother uh, in the hospital recently just for a simple cause, but they carried out MRI, CT scan, 2D ego. Uh, we don't know what, what is required, right? So it, because it is insurance, they'll carry out this test, whether it is necessary or not. We have no clue about it, but we are going to the hospital and it's important for us to know that our patient is getting treated effectively. But that's what insurance companies will look at. They will give a norm and there is a CMS, which is a federal body in the US, uh, who, who gives complete guidelines for the doctors for specific diseases, specific diagnosis, what are the steps that they are supposed to carry out, what are the tests that they are supposed to carry out. On the similar line, insurance companies also work with the specialty societies, uh, be it cardiologists, dermatologists, or family medicines. Uh, they decide what are the steps that are expected to be carried out by the doctor for a specific scenario and are those tests, uh, steps being carried out by the uh, doctors for the patient. So that's what, making sure that cost is also covered in terms of the effectiveness of the treatment to the patient. It's not unnecessary extra cost. And insight into the patient care. Consider again, having the central mechanism of data, like we have started ABHA uh, in India, so we should have a centralized uh, system which will take care of all the patient history and will be available to the uh, doctors in their network area. So these are the three main uh, uh, components for the better health treatment, patient of course, providers and health insurance companies and what they would be looking at. Now let us see designing the value-based care, what, what we are looking at. First is information capture. Uh, right now, quite a lot of doctors are still uh, relying on paper charting, all the information being noted in the paper and it is offline documentation in the system eventually, right? Uh, it might be given as a third party contractor to enter the data into the system. I am not sure whether it will get captured uh, correctly. Uh, there was a bite earlier with some statements which was absolutely funny how the data gets captured at the, in the system. I mean, even there are codes that are being used now across the world in the IT industry, right? For diagnosis, ICD codes and procedures and so on and so forth. Even none, one digit here and there can make a tremendous difference. So it's important those operators make the data entry effectively. So that's important, information capture and all the information about the uh, free text data that doctors are very fond of. I mean, they might write an essay, but which is very, very important for the patient and the clinicians who are going to look at it, what that essay means, what, what's the treatment was carried out and what's the uh, future course of action. 
uh, instructed by the doctor. So that, that's important. Probably use of uh, Alexa, Siri and all those systems uh, or Google. So this clinical record data entry is possible when the doctor is treating and he probably can give a voice instruction and that can capture the information in the health system automatically. That's definitely a possible. We are in the era of artificial intelligence and all. So that's, it's, it's possible. And that, that's being done in some of the hospitals, right? Then predictive, predictive care plan preparation. It's also again, when we have a data in the system, uh, which can be used, referred to, and then decide what the course of action required for the effective treatment, uh, we, we can, the doctor can decide the plan of action on exactly what can be done to the patient to make sure it is not deteriorated in terms of their health. Integration with the systems, as I said, ABBA, that, that we have started in India, uh, interoperability is going to play a crucial role in the healthcare system. So even if the uh, EHR systems are different in different hospitals, what can be done to make sure that those systems can talk to each other in an effective manner and share the data of the patient so that you don't have to have probably separate centralized system. It's available for everyone to consume. So interoperability and integration within the EHR systems is going to play a crucial role in the value-based score system. Uh, templatization. Uh, every specialty society has a standard steps that they are supposed to carry out, uh, be it a cardiologist, they know exactly what is supposed to be done. Uh, the doctor treating the diabetic patient, they know what are the steps that they are supposed to carry out, right? So EHR system can be designed in such a way, there are templates available so that it just click, click, click and capture all the information and not wasting time in entering the manual data in the system. So that, that's possible, there are EHR systems in the market which creates these templates in consultation with these doctors and design the workflows how data can be captured and of course tablets instead of notepads so uh, doctors should have uh, easy access to the uh, technology and then capture the information as real time as possible while treating the patient and then it is available in the main system in the EHR right so that's that's the starting point as far as IT uh, infrastructure is concerned and how it can effectively be used by the clinicians. Uh, when designing, I think templatization is what we are talking about, making sure that information acquisition is effective, smart, simple for the doctors and not, so, not a cumbersome activity in general. Uh, they should not feel it as a special activity which is unnecessary. It's part of their day-to-day -day routine. Uh, integrated connectors, uh, which is what, what I told you about interoperability uh, in the previous slide. So it should have right connections between the EHR systems uh, to make sure data can be transferred without any hassles uh, electronically. Uh, these are some of the standards that are used in healthcare HL7 and FHIR, FHIR, uh, which is a standard XML based data system flow between the systems uh, from, from A EHR to B EHR and vice versa. This is the same system that can be used while transferring the data from the lab systems when the tests are carried out and that can be transferred back to the hospital system. So these, these are the standards which are common that should be used across uh, the healthcare systems, uh, be it EHR systems, insurance companies or hospital systems, that, that's important. Uh, handwriting recognition uh, like OCR, right? Optical character recognition, that can be also used. Uh, Google is working on this very effectively. Uh, we are working with them to see how the handwritten notes can be scanned through and it can be transferred directly into the EHR system. So that, that's also possible because we still know that there are rural areas where uh, doctors are still using paper charting even in the US. So it, it's difficult for them to uh, pay for the uh, hefty amount of the EHR system cost and then start using it. So this, this can be a possibility in the rural areas specifically for capturing the data from hand, handwritten notes uh, to the electronic systems. Machine learning and AI, uh, this maximum use of codes 
is going to help because for every uh, as i said earlier the uh, the diabetic patient what is the treatment used for every different scenario there is a icd code available uh, that icd code can help doctor what exactly that uh, doctor has given a treatment to a patient that doesn't need that doctor should be writing probably an ac or two two three liners that icd code will clearly tell what was the problem and what is the treatment suggested on the similar line uh, the snomed codes and other code uh, families uh, for the medications uh, procedures and all they are available in the us so those codes can be used as much as possible so that doctor himself can see whether the treatment that has happened is done in a effective way or not that that's possible uh, so what we do as an organization is eventually we fetch data from their healthcare systems we transform that data see what data has been captured in the system and eventually show a scorecard to a doctor how the doctor has performed let's say a doc doctor has 100 visits in a month of those 100 visits have they treated uh, all those patients effectively and the final scorecard is given in the percentage eventually the doctor is expected to submit that data to cms on a yearly basis the way we fill uh, the income tax uh, on every year every doctor in the us is mandatorily expected to submit their clinical data quality data and the cost data to cms federal body and then they decide whether the doctor should be penalized or he should be incentivized to uh, by for giving the right treatment to a doctor so that that's what is important and that's possible effectively if these uh, clinicians are putting the data in the right fashion in the system that's that's important uh yeah these are different uh, clinical terms in terms of the codes that they can use as i said icd snomed we have uh, I, uh snomed ayush in india then loing and other code sets so doctors should be using those code split as much as possible while data capture information distribution <clears throat> so ehr has to be designed in such a way that the data distribution can happen effectively uh, to the patient to the insurance companies in a different fashion right so that distribution network also or the infrastructure also should be designed in such a way it is smooth and standard while sharing of data between the communities uh, there are a lot of new measures that are coming up which are patient focused measure uh, we call it as a patient reported outcome uh, where after the treatment is carried out the surveys are shared with the patients and they are supposed to fill in the feedback how the treatment was given and how the patient is feeling after the treatment so this this is what is important that the surveys can be designed in such a way data capture in the system is effective because that's data which is going to be used for further analytics and research purpose not only by the doctors or specialty society but even the pharmaceutical companies uh, it should be mobile based applications or tablet based applications where even the patient can fill in and not feel uh again extra or burden of sharing the feedback uh, to the clients i mean we always see right i mean uh, if you go to hospitals or hotels after the uh, uh, activity is complete they share us the feedback form how many people actually feel the fe feedback they don't feel it uh, necessary probably but it's important especially in this domain it's important that the patients also share the feedback uh, to the doctors to make sure that the future treatments that are designed are effective and can be enhanced further uh data sharing and data availability is again based on the uh, uh, specific healthcare designed fhr compliant forms or the ccda forms so uh, even the data submission to the cms that happens in uh, these kind of forms uh, so that it can be used read effectively and uh, exposed on the user interface uh, in a nice fashion right of course phi protection is crucial while sharing the data distribution of data it's important for the systems to make sure that security protocols are designed in such a way that incorrect data is not shared with the uh, participant who is not supposed to have exposure to that data that's important right yes. <clears throat> 
insurance companies will come uh, come with uh, their own uh, specific uh, uh, use cases like we are working on a use case which is called as risk adjustment uh, how we can probably finalize the insurance premium or the cost for a specific treatment how that risk can be adjusted effectively and for that it's important that information that is captured in the system is accurate 100% and to the quality that is that the clinical uh, experts can refer to it and uh, give the consultation to the insurance companies so having these pair use cases or insurance company use cases is important how you design the ehr systems as well for data capture that's also very very important again accelerated prior authorization so when the uh, patient gets admitted to the hospital it, it is a cumbersome uh, task that the policy uh, is effective it can uh, the hospital can hospital claims can be accepted prior to the uh, start of the treatment and all so that process is also again very very cumbersome even in india today right uh, in some cases you have to pay uh, in advance and then claim eventually later on because it may be not part of the network or within network also there are some uh, disclaimers or clauses that they may not give you a, a advance payment uh, to the hospital so these prior authorizations for the claims and all is very very important uh, for the insurance companies so what are the uh, pointers that needs to be designed to make sure these authorizations can be done effectively establishment and monitoring of the protocols as i said uh, there are guidelines designed for the specialty uh, clinicians as well as the uh, insurance companies uh, or the doctors who can decide what is the best way or best steps of treatment for the patients how it can be enhanced further to make sure that we have a uh, right set of activities carried out by the doctors and the information captured which is used for the betterment of the patient so uh, monitoring the process protocols and making sure it is enhanced uh, uh, day by day is important in while designing the systems uh, high risk patients uh, especially the patients which are coming into the emergency departments or the patients who are uh, in the hospice care what are the state uh, treatment protocols and how it should be taken care of uh, what are the exceptions in terms of giving the fast treatment for the patients is very very crucial so that's also uh, important for the uh, uh, the clinicians or the experts to decide what is the protocol that they are supposed to use in case of high risk patients and differential risk adjustment payments uh looking at is i mean even in india if you look at the insurance company will decide what is the premium that has to be charged depending on the uh, group insurance individual insurance what is the age of that insurance what is the history of that patient and depending on that depending on that uh, your insurance premium gets decided right so all these can be decided on a logical parameters and not on the uh, interpre interpretation of the insurance companies on their own there would be a standard protocols that should be used to ensure that the information uh, for these uh, data points is captured in a effective way again uh, so this risk adjustment payments can be done by the patients for the insurance companies so this is what is the important aspects while designing uh, not only healthcare systems being ehr or any other systems but uh, the uh, procedures that can decide the early approval and uh, uh, the insurance claims from the patients uh, that, that can be verified with the insurance companies and the final payment that can be done to the doctor <coughs> uh, while we talk about all this what could be the challenges in terms of the barriers especially from the uh, doctors so it's it's mainly resistance for change and if you see it in any field uh, it it's difficult to sell the change we need to make sure that that change is going to benefit the end user be it a patient be it a doctor or the insurance company right uh, every doctor uh, even if it is a it savvy doctor 
uh, he will be hesitant probably to move from his windows based system to probably uh, apple uh, smart smartphone or smart device right so because they are accustomed to it they are used to it the way they are following the pro processes so it's important how we can sell that uh, to the uh, end user right increased burden of additional documentation that's the biggest when we also do a survey uh, uh, this discussing with the doctors uh, what they feel is that it is cumbersome to capture the information in the EHR system and that feedback is being given to the EHR companies to make sure that how it can be templatized as we discussed earlier. Uh, that can be templatized and the data information that, keep, that, that is captured in the system in a smartest effective way uh, so that a uh, doctor doesn't feel that is an extra job. right? Uh, so it, it's important that we should be avoiding or eliminating that perception in the doctor's minds to make sure they are using the EHR to the fullest extent that can be used uh, for the future. Low adaptation of EHR, especially in the rural areas. As I said, they are still using the paper charting. So how we can use the artificial intelligence to make sure that that data can be transferred to the EHR system. Same is the case in the rural populations and small clinics <clears throat> and the slow or uh, small or mid-sized hospital systems uh, who cannot afford a uh, large cost. Even if they are uh, creating their own custom built software, it should be important that that software data can be transferred uh, into the uh, systems like ABA in an effective manner. So th these are probably the barriers that we can see. Uh, which probably will make a hurdle, but it's important. And it's. I think it, it will be uh, a future for sure that the health, healthcare system gets transformed uh, to the unified or the centralized system, which can benefit all these communities, be it patient, providers, or insurance companies. I think that's it from my side. Uh, we can open for the Q&A. As you're talking about the digital transformation, digital transformation in the digital era, but it is not that much implemented to you know to have the privacy and the security of health information. Correct. About data. So can you put a light how you can secure in terms of digital accounts, privacy, and framework? So. Uh, most of the stuff that's happening now is in on cloud-based systems and all these cloud providers, be it Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft, Azure, are uh, HIPAA compliant. So whatever data gets stored, uh, it is fully secured. I mean, it is uh, the uh, clauses and the NDA, uh, there are certifications involved in the security aspect of it. And all these uh, companies who are providing the cloud server in terms of the breach of data uh, through the system. It's just that when the data gets transferred from an individual to a participant, that's where the uh, checks are supposed to be in place in terms of the standard operating procedures. For example, a call center uh, who is actually expected to get the data and share it with the patient or a doctor, that person is validating all the checks and balances and then handing over the information to the right recipient. That, that's the only area where there is the possibility of a breach. Otherwise, as far as the uh, healthcare systems and the cloud-based systems are concerned, it's all secured. Uh, 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 the first uh, uh, reply to him is Isha has not been passed by the bargain, so we do not have an axe as of today. Right, right. So uh, that would be one. Uh, True. Uh, the second. Uh, Rather, two comments which I have. Uh, you mentioned use of uh, tablets or any um, uh, any IT uh, Device. devices for entry. Uh, yeah. Directly. The issue uh, there again is um, the one of uh, infection control. So the devices that we need uh, today for the, that kind of uh, stuff are expensive because they have to withstand uh, abrasive chemicals, liquids, and things like that. Yeah. So that is one major constraint in our, uh, our systems where we are uh, focusing so much on costs. <laughs> and uh, 
and uh, driving down, uh, trying to drive down costs all over uh, the system. Agree. The second, the second problem, uh, the comment was on the issue of coding. Now, uh, we always talk about you know healthcare uh, workers being resistant to, to change. <laughs> It is partly correct for, but the different reason than what is perceived. The main uh, reason is they are exposed to ICD coding only after they have entered practice. Right. Uh, then missing out on coding actually drives down their payments, returns, and things like that. So. There is a general uh, trend, and uh, this is prevalent even in the US, yeah. that uh, coding tends to be upcoded right. rather than downcoded, and it imposes additional costs on the system. True. So, uh, maybe coding should be in the. Uh, like to, uh, as, a, as a part of curriculum itself. As a part of curriculum, uh, what they are doing in the UK is uh, they uh, what, what they call it, uh, They are training doctors. So there are modules for uh, medical recording. <coughs> we don't. Yeah. In our curriculum, even today we don't. Have. Right. Right. No, you are absolutely right. Even in the US, you you are right that. Uh, because we are uh, seeing data from various, almost 100,000 doctors, uh, right? Most of the uh, specialty doctors, especially, who are doing the surgeries and all, they are used to writing everything as an essay or the text form. But again, IT is coming up with uh, different mechanisms like artificial intelligence or, or machine learning. So they should be in a position to fetch that data and use it in an effective way. Uh, for the final conclusion and that can be used for the research purpose as a transform data. The only challenge in that is AI or machine learning is not 100% foolproof. It can give a result only up to 80 to 85% accuracy. So false positive is a big challenge over there and but you're right I mean it should be part of curriculum itself so that they are exposed to these different uh, code terminologies that can be used in the system. And even ear chair systems can also be uh, designed in such a way that a doctor should be in a position to just filter on a specific disease criteria in a text form and then it in the system it will be captured as an ICD code eventually. Entire programming that you are doing, entire form that you are doing, but it doesn't happen in like medical. Right. That can be explored. Um, as a suggestion. Absolutely. And Agile is the standard methodology of programming and it's used in the healthcare as well. But it's important that we have a right uh, analyst to capture the requirements effectively that can be used in the development uh, from day one. Uh, my name is Akshay. Uh, so my question is uh, pretty simple on uh, what is the Indian scenario. Uh, we don't see any eruption of uh, the medical side uh, data getting captured by doctor till now. Right. The whole reason is uh, uh, the time which is taken for doctors to enter that data. Is there anything which is happening on that regards? Because you even even a suggestion that a tab is to be used, our doctors are so busy in looking at patients, they don't get the time to really enter that data. So I think is there any uh, thought which is going on on that, and are any companies working on that part? Of course, as I said uh, in my presentation, two areas. One the templatization of the uh, EHR system so that it is not a cumbersome task for even the outpatient clinic where the doctor is uh, treating a patient and the voice recognized systems which can help uh, doctors to capture the information in the system. Uh, right now it may be a bit costly but eventually if you look at the IT transformation over the years or ages, every year the cost is reducing uh, definitely in this area. right? So it, it will be a future for sure in terms of data capture even in the rural area. Thank you, sir, for such an informative session. I now request Dr. Vijay Sagar, Dean of Symbiosis Medical College for Women, to felicitate Mr. Narendra Shaligram.